Okay, if you will, uh, turn back with me uh, to page 4, página 4. And uh, we're going to go back to the beginning of this chapter and look at a section that is titled Saludos y Expresiones de Cortesía. Do you know what that means? What do you think saludos means? It means greetings, salutations. What about expresiones de cortesía? It means expressions of courtesy. So on this page and on the next page, we find a number of words and phrases and expressions that will uh, enable us to greet someone appropriately in Spanish. If you look at section number one, we have Manolo and Mari Carmen having a conversation. Would you repeat, please? Repitan. Hola, Mari Carmen. ¿Qué tal, Manolo? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Regular, nos vemos, ¿eh? Hasta mañana. Now, if we think back to the vowel sounds and the consonants that we reviewed earlier. Hola, not hola, but hola. Hola, Mari Carmen. ¿Qué tal, Manolo? ¿Cómo estás? What do you think they're saying? What do you think hola means? Hello. Hello, Mari Carmen. She responds by saying, ¿Qué tal, Manolo? ¿Cómo estás? What do you think ¿Qué tal means? Well, ¿Qué tal is, how's it going? How's it going, Manolo? ¿Cómo estás? How are you? He responds by saying, muy bien. I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Y tú? And you? Then she says, regular. That obviously means what? Regular. I'm okay. I'm so-so. Nos vemos, eh? Uh, we'll see each other later, okay? And he says, hasta mañana, until tomorrow, or see you tomorrow. Let's look at the second conversation between Elisa Velasco and Martin Gomez. Repitan, repeat. Buenas tardes, señor Gomez. Muy buenas, señora Velasco. ¿Cómo está? Bien, gracias. ¿Y usted? Muy bien, gracias. Hasta luego. Adiós. Now, did you notice any difference in the greetings that were used in the first conversation with the second conversation? In the first conversation, Mari Carmen asks Manolo, ¿Cómo estás? In the second conversation, Mari Martín Gómez asks Ms. Velasco, ¿Cómo está? This is an example of being formal and informal in Español. In the first conversation, we have two people that are speaking informally. In the second conversation, we have two people that are speaking formally. And we'll discuss that here in just a little bit. Look at the third conversation. We have Lupe and the professor. The professor. Repita. Buenos dias, professor. Buenos días. ¿Cómo te llamas? 
Me llamo Lupe Carrasco. Mucho gusto, Lupe. Igualmente. What do you think buenos dias means? Literally, it means good day. We use it to say, hello, how are you? Buenos dias. ¿Cómo estás? He responds by saying, buenos dias, ¿cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas is, what is your name? She responds by saying, me llamo Lupe Carrasco. Then the professor says, mucho gusto. It's a pleasure, Lupe. And she says, igualmente. Literally, it means equally. But the sense is, likewise. You know, I'm pleased to meet you also. Now let's look at the fourth and last conversation. We're taught, we have Miguel and Karina speaking. Repitan. Hola, me llamo Miguel René. ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo te llamas? She responds and says, me llamo Karina. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto, Karina. ¿Y de dónde eres? Yo soy de Venezuela. ¿Y tú? Yo soy de México. Now we've introduced some additional questions to the conversation. When Miguel says, hola, me llamo Miguel René. What is he saying? Hi, my name is Miguel René. ¿Y tú? And you? ¿Cómo te llamas? What is your name? Uh -huh. And Karina says, me llamo Karina. My name is Karina. Mucho gusto. It's a pleasure. Miguel responds by saying, mucho gusto, Karina. It's a pleasure, Karina. Then he says, de donde eres? What is he asking her? From where are you? Where are you from? She says, yo soy de Venezuela. I am from Venezuela. Y tú and you? He says, yo soy de Mexico. I'm from Mexico. Now, let's go back and look at these a little closer. Look at the yellow box in the middle of page four. It's going to contrast the first conversation with the second conversation. When we use phrases like, ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? And, ¿Y tú? These are expressions that we use in informal situations. These are phrases that we use with people that we know on a first name basis. People that we are close to. People that are close in age to us. Como esta and usted are used to address someone in a more formal way. People we may not know. People that we want to show a degree of respect to. People that might be older than we are where the relationship should be a little more formal. Uh, we would be formal in a employee-employer situation. Uh, a teacher with a principal, a child with a parent, often will be using uh, the formal speech rather than the informal speech. Look at the top of page five. Some of the questions that are introduced. ¿Cómo se llama usted? Now, usted is used in formal situations. 
cómo te llamas o cómo te llamas tú is used in informal situations. Think about it is in español there are two yous. Tú we use in an informal way. With people we have a first name relationship with. Usted is formal. When we want to use a title, we might use it with our professor. We might use it with Reverend so-and-so, Dr. so-and-so, Mr. so-and-so, Mrs. so-and-so. ¿Cómo está usted? How are you? We're being formal in this situation. Uh, responses to ¿Cómo te llamas? Or ¿Cómo se llama usted? Now the response is going to be made by I, or in Spanish, yo. Regardless of whether we're being informal or formal, it is still I that responds. So the response will be the same, regardless of the situation. Me llamo Carlos. Yo me llamo Carlos. My name is Carlos. ¿Cómo te llamas tú? What is your name? Or, ¿Cómo se llama usted? What is your name? One's informal, one's formal. But the response, in either case, me llamo, will be the same. Um, another response to some of the questions. Um, when we say, ¿Cómo está usted? ¿Cómo? Está usted. It asks, how are you? Now here we're being formal. ¿Cómo estás tú? How are you? Here we're being informal. Again, the response is going to be by I, so the response is the same. Um, estoy muy bien. I am fine. Or, as in the case of Marie Godman, she said, regular. I am regular. I am okay. So, so. Um, some of the other phrases that we have here. Mucho gusto. Literally, means much pleasure. When you meet someone for the first time, you may say, it's a pleasure to meet you. Mucho gusto would be the equivalent of that. Uh, if you say, hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. You might respond by saying, igualmente, equally, or Likewise, it's a pleasure for me also. Okay. Um, in the box at the top of page five, at the bar on the last line, it says a woman can also say encantada, or a gentleman can say encantado. Literally, it means enchanted. Now, you know, centuries ago, we may have used enchanted in English when we met someone. Um, these days, enchanted gives me the idea of fairy dust and magic wands in English. Uh, not likely to be used, but in Espanol it's still a very common way to express uh, pleasure in meeting someone. Encantada or encantado. Uh, the last question we're looking at in the middle of page five. De donde eres? It asks, from where are you? Now normally we would say, where are you from? 
Again, there are two ways to ask this. De donde eres y de donde es. This is informal. This is formal. When we're speaking to someone we call tú, de donde eres tú. Or we would say de donde es if we're being more formal and speaking to someone we call usted. So if you look at the purple box at the bottom of page five, let's review some of these expressions that we've looked at. Repitan, repeat. Buenos dias. Now we have two new ones. Buenas tardes. And buenas noches. Good day or good morning. Buenas tardes, good afternoon. And buenas noches, which is good evening or good night. Now we also saw some of these in the conversations that we read earlier. Titles of Mr. and Mrs. and Miss. Repitan. Señor. Señora. And señorita. Notice the abbreviations that are to the right of each word. Okay? And then some good words to keep in our um, in the back of our minds. These are words of courtesy uh, that we, we should not forget. Repitan gracias. Muchas gracias. Now gracias means thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. A response to that would be de nada or no hay de que. De nada, you're welcome. No hay de que, no, it was nothing. You're welcome. Every mother's favorite word, por favor, please. Perdón, pardon me or excuse me. Con permiso, pardon me or excuse me. Okay, so here is um, a short list of vocabulary words that you'll be expected to be able to use in conversations um, where you and another person are going to meet um, and uh, just carry on a very brief uh, conversation of greeting with each other. Okay. If we will go to page 8, we're going to review some of the material that we've looked at by looking at activity A at the top of page 8. It is titled Pronuncie, Pronounce. It says the letters and combination of letters listed below represent the Spanish sounds that are the most different from English. Uh, you will practice the pronunciation of some of these letters in upcoming chapters uh, and throughout the book there will be segments where you are going to look at some of these sounds a little more in depth. But for right now, let's go over this activity and see um, if we can remember the proper pronunciation for each. Now on the left we have a word and then the letter. And then we're going to be asked to match it up with the explanation to the right. Número uno, repitan, repeat this. Mucho. We're looking for the sound ch. Mucho. Which one does it pair up with on the right hand side? Okay, it's number letter C, like CH in English, cheese. Okay, número dos, repitan, repeat. Geraldo. Geraldo. 
we're looking for the sound G E. And it's going to sound, the G is going to sound the same as G I. He and he. Or the J sound in Spanish. Which one does it pair up with on the right hand side? Okay, it's letter E. It's similar to a strong English H. Número tres. Who can tell me what this word is in Espanol? Hola. Remember that the H is what? Look at letter I on the right. It is what? Never pronounced. Okay, number four. Número cuatro. Repitan. Gusto. The GU, just like GA and GO, are going to give you a hard G sound. It will be similar to the English G in garden. Look at letter A, like the G in English garden. Number five. Repita. Me llamo. We're looking at the double L or the A. What does a double L sound like? Look at letter F on the right hand side. It's like a Y in English. Say yes. Or the L I sound in million. Me llamo. Okay, number six. We're looking at the letter Ñ. Repitan. Señor. What does it match up to on the right? Okay, it's the letter H. Similar to the NY sound in Canyon. One of the words that I gave you as an example earlier. Okay, número siete, number seven. Repitan. Profesora. Let's say it again. Profesor. Profesora. One trill in the R. That matches up with the letter G on the right. A trill sound. Um, I'm sorry. It is letter B on the right. Similar to the TT of butter, when pronounced very quickly. And then the next word, Ramon. Say Ramon. That would be G, a trill sound. Several Spanish R's in a row. You've got to get that tip of the tongue vibrating off your palate there. Ramon or Monterrey. The last one, number nine, repitan, nos vemos. Now notice I didn't bite my lower lip, I didn't say nos vemos, I just said nos vemos. Remember that the V and the B in Spanish should be the same. Look at letter D on the right hand side. Now we have just one other thing to look at uh, on this page, Pagina Ocho. At the lower uh, part of the page, in the purple box, titled Nota Comunicativa. And what did I do with my pen? Here we go. Uh, we're going to look at cognates. Now, what is a cognate? Um, in Espanol, they're called cognados. Uh, these are words that are very similar from one language to the next. For example, the word general in Spanish is general. It's a perfect cognate. It means the same thing, it's spelled exactly the same way. And what we're going to do here is look at a number of words. On the left we have adjectives, on the right we have nouns. Some of these are perfect cognates, some of them are semi-cognate. Let's look at the first ones. Repitan. Cruel. Elegante, flexible, importante, inteligente, 
interesante, optimista, paciente, pesimista, responsable, sentimental, terrible, now some nouns, banco, bar, café, diccionario, estudiante, examen, hotel, museo, oficina, parque, teléfono, televisión. Uh, this textbook makes an effort to, uh, at least in the very beginning of the book, to use as many cognates as, uh, as possible. Uh, and, you know, this certainly will facilitate uh, and enrich your vocabulary um, because they are so easy to pick up. Actually, Spanish and English uh, have hundreds of words that are cognates or semi-cognates. Uh, if you'll just look at the bottom, page nine. Look at paso dos, step two. At the very bottom of the page, we have a list of words here that you should be able to recognize. Arrogante. What's that look like? Arrogant. Egoista. Emocional. Idealista, and so on. You have probably on these two pages a good three dozen words, two to three dozen words, that are going to be uh, very easy for you to uh, pick out uh, and know exactly what they are because they are cognates, words that are spelled the same or nearly the same in both Spanish and English. And um, that's it for this lesson. Remember to practice your five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Remember that um, uh, the vast majority of the consonants in English and Spanish have the same sound. A B is B in both languages. An M is M in both languages. Uh, you need to practice uh, pronouncing these consonants with the different vowel sounds. And then do review your uh, expressions of courtesy and greetings that we found at the very beginning of the chapter. Um, take some time as you stroll around campus and just Say buenos dias to someone and see what reaction you get. Como esta? Or como estas tu? Um, get a classmate and practice short conversations.